Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at the latest release of Plasma. This is 6.2.1. So 6.2.1. Of course, the dot one just released the other day. I just upgraded to this today. And I wanted to have a brief look at it. Of course, we looked at Plasma 6.0. Uh, a couple months ago when it first came out. And with any big change going from the Plasma 5 to the Plasma 6, the recommendation is usually about the same. You probably don't want to jump on it right away. There's going to be bug fixes. There's going to be some issues and things. And so I wanted to go ahead and have a look at this once this came out. Now, the biggest, most controversial, or maybe at least most talked about feature of 6.2 is the once a year notification to give donations to plasma which i still think is a really dumb idea and there's a couple reasons the first is a notification is designed for a system that uh it's designed to tell you something important about your system because the operating system is not supposed to get in your way that is a stupid place for it number two it only comes around once a year which completely violates every term of effective marketing number three it shows up in december the time that people's giving donations are down because everyone's focused on buying Christmas presents. So, really dumb idea. Now, I certainly would not advocate for showing the thing more often, uh, which would satisfy marketing. As I had said before, the best place to do that is to put it somewhere in here with a different color, maybe under system or maybe near the top under the quick settings. A uh, big, maybe red or green button help support plasma right into here. So, anytime somebody goes into system settings, you see, see it. Now, maybe the problem is people don't enter system settings as much. The biggest challenge I found on that particular item is there was a lot of talk about, oh, you can disable it. I didn't find a way to disable it other than disabling notifications itself. Everything, and nearly every article talked about it. People said you can disable it. There's only one thing that suggested where to disable it in notifications, and that is not there. So this is everything inside of the notifications. So additional feedback, just show application progress, keep pop-up open during progress. This is like if you're transferring files, it'll keep that thing open as you're transferring the files over. Notification badges, pop-ups, um, uh, visibility conditions. So if it's a critical notification, even show you see my cursor just got big. That's accessibility. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> you wiggle your cursor a lot. It gets big. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, no normal notifications, uh, show over full screen windows, uh, low priority, show pop up, show history. And so there's nothing in here about disabling that. So if it's here, let me know where. I searched everywhere in the settings app. I spent a good half hour looking online for the places. I do not see the place to disable that thing. Why is it a big deal? Because Plasma is starting to borrow from things from Windows. In fact, they're borrowing other things from Windows, like defaulting to software updates needing to restart the system. So you can change that uh, inside of this, the software and update. We have the option to configure them immediately. Okay, I got to turn that stupid cursor thing off. We'll get there in a minute. Um, the default is after rebooting. So all of the updates are now done in Discover, which is a really good thing. I think Discover has made a lot of progress. But when you come under the updates and uh, you hit the button, it's going to tell you, okay, click this button to reboot the computer and install updates. The same thing Windows is doing. That's the default. Now, since this is Plasma, you can revert these features all back to how they were. Hey, even this floating bar down here, the floating panel, if you don't like that, you can even revert that back to the old way. I'm not going to try and do it right now. I forget the exact protocol. I think it's just over here and configuring it. Uh, but you can do all that. So if you do like to install things immediately, go ahead and uh, uh, go into your settings and change those there. Those are kind of my negative criticisms about it. So all the negative is out of the way. I think this build is excellent. If you like Plasma 6.2, uh, what they did with 6.2 and particularly 6.2.1, they really did a lot of bug fixes in here. There's not a lot on the overall UI that's changed a whole lot. There is one more feature. This is only the second distro I've seen this by default, and that is you now have a screen dimmer 
built into the system. The, I first saw that on Deepin. Now, there's been an application you can install for a while, but this is one of the first times that it's available here. This is not a laptop screen. This is a full desktop screen. And I actually didn't even know this was a thing, but a friend of mine really likes the screen super dim, and so he installed this on his and on Linux Mint, and it's like, oh, that's neat. So now we have two distros that have a screen brightener built in. That is now Plasma, and I talked about Deepin about a month or so ago when that first had rolled out. So those are some really good things. Let's go ahead and talk about that accessibility now so that this mouse cursor keeps getting, stops getting bigger. Uh, this is one of the things that they really prioritized in 6.2 is the accessibility. Now, accessibility is an issue inside of... Uh, Linux, a lot of people are saying accessibility isn't here, so they might have to stick with other operating systems, but it is getting bigger. Now, the one that keeps on doing this is the shaking cursor. So, oh, look at this. Oh, boy. Do we want to even think about this? Let's see, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a big cursor. All right. That is kind of annoying in my case, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. But uh, that is kind of cool if you want to find your cursor. That was enabled by default, so you might find that if you're wiggling your mouse around and the cursor gets huge. That's what's going on. We also have a color blindness correction. This is a nice thing. I think this is new where if you all have color blindness, then you can go in and choose various colors and it's going to do a correction based on a variety of different modes in order to determine what is, uh, what is the best way to run your colors. So that will, in theory, fix the screen. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if you are colorblind and I hit the apply. Does this help you see things or not? I have no idea. I'm not colorblind. Uh, but that is uh, another one of the features is they're really bringing back a lot of accessibility options. And uh, the colorblindness, I think, was talked about quite a bit. And uh, the shake cursor there was enabled by default. That's a little annoying for me personally, so I'll go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, we also have some adjustments for drawing tablets. Of course, we don't have any drawing tablets here, uh, but there are some adjustments to make working with drawing tablets like your Wacom tablets a lot better. And the other place that is a lot of good uh, uh, positive uh, direction is power management, which unfortunately I will not be able to show you because we are not on a laptop. So this is what the power management looks like right now. There is an advanced options, which doesn't give us really anything else here, uh, but... If you were running a laptop or a computer with a battery of some form, you know, a desktop with a battery in it, I don't know, uh, then you would see some other options for on battery and on setting, and then you can do a lot more tweaks. And then you can actually con uh, rotate between your power settings with the meta and B key. Now, it doesn't work for me, of course. As I said, I just don't have a... Uh, a system that has those up and you can see that it does a really good job of not cluttering the system up on something that's not uh, appropriate. Now if I took this computer and I plugged it into a laptop it would probably show me all of those options. I want to go ahead and have a brief look at the uh, release notes here uh, inside of this. So here's what 6.2 brought, just in brief summary. So this is, talks about the drawing tablet I items and the system settings and drawing tablets. There's a collaboration and a test, and then you can rebind your pen buttons to different types of mouse clicks. So if you are working with those, you can do that. Uh, the color management has been greatly improved, particularly among Wayland. Uh, so they're running better color profiles to tone some things down. So they show us kind of what this image would look like before and after. And if you're looking at the image, you'll see that the before does look a little bit more washed out. The after is a much better, clearer image. And so that's kind of the, the default uh, color pro, uh, profiles on under Wayland now. This talks about the power management. Again, the Meta B key is going to... Uh, cycle that around, uh, but in our case, of course, we don't uh, we don't have a um, uh, we don't have a, a laptop here, so there's no battery options down here. And then, of course, we have uh, the system updates. We talked about that, where it's really um, uh, they did a lot of. Uh, Kind of, in my opinion, a lot of things. This was goes back to Plasma 6, maybe even a little bit before that. But the default is now to 
install the updates on a reboot, which in my case, I was still researching things. It was kind of annoying. So I actually, you can't change it on the fly once you've already changed it. Once you change it in the settings, you have to reboot. So I actually just went into the terminal and manually did there, which you don't use on, this is a uh, neon. You don't use the app update. You use PKCon up upgrade is what you're doing. Uh, or pecan gray uh, update, excuse me. Um, let me just show you <clears throat> the command I used here. Uh, so uh, pkcon update is what you want to do to check for updates and install them inside of um, uh, KDE Neon. Uh, but I did toggle that over, so now presumably if I keep using this machine, any future updates will install at the time I'm updating it. And then here they talked about the accessibility specifically. They talked about the sticky keys and the colorblindness tools over there. And uh, they did, of course, just a few few changes to the, to the tweaks. There's a weather report. There's um, uh, minimize all windows. Just a couple of other major items there. And I thought they said, mentioned in there somewhere about the uh, donation uh, thing that we had started with. Uh, 6.2.1, uh, this mostly is just a bug fix. There's nothing major in here. Uh, there's just some fixes, some workarounds, and some other adjustments. So ultimately, though, the point here being is if you are holding off on Plasma 6 because it was still too new, I think that the... 6.2.1 is very good, very clean, and very mature. Now, I'm using this inside of a virtual machine. It is working okay. It's working a little snappy, although it's a little slow, which I predict is probably due to Wayland, which has always been a lower, a little slower for me on virtualization. And for those curious right now, I'm using GNOME boxes as this distro was not working in VirtualBox for me at all. So, uh, that is kind of the uh, the brief layout of all of the the changes and the fixes. Uh, Plasma Plasma is standing out as one of the uh, one of the better on uh, better desktop environments as far as where it's it's moving. It's it's progressing on to. Um, uh, it's just progressing on to being a very mature and very modern desktop. The unfortunate thing is sometimes that brings with it things that. Uh, are just are just annoying to me, uh, but that's my personal opinion. Of course, over here, online accounts. Here's your next cloud, so you can enter your server stuff. We do have Google. Um, we don't have Microsoft, which is something GNOME has now in their online accounts. So, not sure if we're getting that into the near future. Uh, but overall, the the distro is really good. Uh, the uh, the desktop environment is really good. Of course, I'm using Neon as the distro here. Uh, the desktop environment, though, uh, 6.2 is very mature. And uh, I might actually want to maybe install this onto my Manjaro Raspberry Pi and see how it works in the Raspberry Pi setting and uh, see what type of uh, results I get over there. Uh, but with that, that is our look at Plasma 6.2. And if you like this type of content, let me know down below. Anything else you want to know about Plasma, discuss that in the comments amongst yourselves. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.